Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Hello and welcome from Mount Olive Lutheran Church and Preschool here in Irmo, South Carolina. We're just outside of the city of Columbia, on the opposite side of town, in fact, from Fort Jackson, where I've been spending most of my time. But every Sunday for the last several weeks, I've been here, worshiping with my brothers and sisters in Christ, worshiping with the good people of, of Mount Olive. And, and as I sit here in this beautiful sanctuary and I hear the, the, the fantastic sermons from their pastor, I can't help but think, I miss home. I miss Zion. They say absence makes the heart grow fonder. And while I agree with that, I, I also think it's not very much fun. What has made this absence go by, and go by very quickly, is that I'm busy. The last two months, I have been busy down here in South Carolina. The Army has got me working out, doing physical training more than I ever have in my entire life. And I'm proud to say at 41, I'm not doing too bad, right? I mean, I can't pass those young bucks on the run, but I can keep up with them, and that's something, right? After PT every morning, we, we get into class, and we're in class all day, and they're teaching us all sorts of great stuff. They're, we're learning how to, be, how to be soldiers in the Army. We're learning how to be chaplains in the Army. They're teaching us how we honor our fallen, how we, how we care for our wounded, and how we nurture our living. Good lessons for anybody, really. I've learned that uh, of everything I've learned, I, I really won't learn anything at all until I can take all these, these lessons and, and put them to practical use with my unit back in South Dakota. All that to say is life down here has been busy. But I know from, from talking to people back home that life is no less busy for you. Things are happening at Zion Lutheran Church School and Preschool. New member classes filled with new member faces and, and uh, the confirmation programs rolling right along in its new format on Sunday morning and Wednesday evenings. I hear that's going gr doing great things. Uh, for the school, the elementary school girls basketball team is back up and going after a two-year hiatus. That's awesome. The, the choir is singing. The bells are chiming. The, the praise band is, is praising. I've said it before, and I'll say it again. There's always something happening at Zion, and I love it. Life is busy. Life is happening. But here's the thing. Life is happening for you up there and for me down here, but our worlds are far apart. For this point in our lives, God is calling us to live disconnected to live apart from each other. And there's a part within me that's sad, sad at that disconnect, sad at that separation. And so this Advent, as this is the first week in an Advent, we enter the season of Advent separately, you up there and me down here. The season of Advent, many, many people think that the season of Advent is a time to prepare our hearts and our minds and our homes for Christmas. And I've got a professor down here, an instructor, who says, well, you're not wrong, but there's more to it than that. You see, this Advent, we, we do two things simultaneously, although we do them apart, we're, we're doing them simultaneously. On one hand, we're looking back on what was, what has been. On the other hand, we're looking forward to what will be. We look back on what was. We look back to that old little town of Bethlehem, to a mother and a father who walked those dark and dreamlessly sleeping streets looking for a place to lay their heads. You see, they too were separated, separated from home. They made their home up in Nazareth. But Joseph is called to return to his ancestral home, the royal city of David, for the census. And it just so happens that this particular census, they have one more to add as Mary is pregnant. 
ready to deliver it at any moment and they need a place to lay down to lay their heads to lay the head of this child that's about to meet the world and they do they find a manger and the baby is born and and he grows he grows in the city of Nazareth he he becomes a a child who is sinless and blameless Sin, lives a perfect life for you and for me he he grows to teach and to heal and to feed and to forgive. He grows so that he might find those who are separated, find those who are lost, and bring them back to the Father. We look back and see how he was beaten, how he suffered under Pontius Pilate and the Jewish leadership, how he was how he was beaten for our transgressions, how he was crucified on a cross for our sins, how it didn't even take but a few hours and he was dead. And so they pulled Jesus' Jesus's lifeless body off the cross and they put him in the tomb only for three days to go by and the tomb to be broken wide open and Jesus to come out resurrected and alive. And for 40 days after that resurrection, he walked and talked and ate with his disciples and with others to reveal to them the Father so that he might remove that separation that they have from the Father. And he did all this. We look back and, and on everything he did. He did all this for one reason, to bring about the kingdom of God. To bring about the kingdom where he would be the king to sit on the throne. That's what we look back to. But now we look ahead, we look forward. At, at the same time as looking back, we look forward to what will be, to the fulfillment of that kingdom that he, he began to bring about at his, at his incarnation. We look forward to the day when he'll, he'll descend on a cloud of power and glory, as it says in our gospel reading today. And we know this is going to happen. We can be assured of it. We, we know it like we know two plus two. We know it because God has promised it. Christ has promised it. And as we've said before, and I'll say again, we have a God who keeps his promises. And on that alone, he could put the period there and say it will be. But he gives us more. He gives us, he gives us a, a, a warning of signs. He said there'll be signs in the heavens that you will see. There'll be signs on earth that you will see and know that I'm coming back. You'll see it in the sun and the moon and the stars. You'll see an earth in distress. You'll, you'll hear war of wars and rumors of wars. You'll open up your phone on whatever news app you use. You'll open up your email. You're, you'll turn on the TV. You'll, you'll, you'll open up the newspaper and you'll hear of wars and rumors of wars, of violence, of hatred, of the world seemingly pulling itself apart. And I say seemingly pull itself apart, but you and I both know it's not seemingly. It is. It's pulling itself apart. And there's two things we can do. We can be afraid. We can be afraid and frightful and, 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 and moan and complain of the way that the world is going, or we can listen to Jesus Christ when he says, don't be alarmed. Don't be alarmed because these are just signs. Just as the, the leaves changing colors as they've done over these last, last month or so, they're still changing here in South Carolina. It's a little warmer. But the leaves are changing, telling us that the cooler temperatures, the winter is coming. And here in a few months, here on the other side of winter, the, the buds will start to appear on those same trees. And, and that's telling us that the, the warmth of summer is about to show up. These are all signs. The world pulling itself apart is a sign that Jesus is coming back. He's bringing with him the fulfillment of that kingdom of God, that new heaven and new earth. So here you and I are, not at the beginning, not at the incarnation, but not yet at the fulfillment. You and I were in the middle. You and I are in the kingdom of God right now, but not yet. Now it's easy, 
and, and rightly so. We focus on the kingdom of God part of that last statement. But did you hear what that sentence started out with? You and I are there. We're there together. We're there in the middle. Clowning sinners to the left of me, joking saints to the right. Here I am, stuck in the middle with you. And you see, yes, we're separated by distance. You right now are living your life in South Dakota. I'm living a life down here in South Carolina. But you and I are together. We're in his kingdom. We're in together in his church. Which makes me ask the question, what does it mean to be church? Jesus tells us in Matthew 18 that wherever two or three are gathered, in his name, there he will be, there his kingdom will be, there his church will be. And we, we, we so often in the time take that literally, that where we can get two or three brothers and sisters in Christ together at the same spot in the same time, then voila, there we've got church. There we have his kingdom. But what if gathering? What if gathering means more than being in the same spot at the same time? Because if we think about his church, if we think about his kingdom, we have to acknowledge that his church, his kingdom is bigger than one physical spot and it's bigger than one tick of the clock. You and I were connected in the middle. Between his incarnation and, and his return for final fulfillment. But remember, it's not just you and me, right? It's all our brothers and sisters here at Mount Olive. It's, it's little Birdie who was baptized at the font this morning. Brothers and sisters in Christ. And, and every congregation between here at Mount Olive and Zion and Rapid City, we're all connected. All of us. And remember, remember Christ's kingdom has no borders, right? We like to put lines on, on a map and we like to make sections, we like to make cities and counties and states and countries. But that's not how God's kingdom works. It means that we are together with all our brothers and sisters in the United States, but not just with the United States. We're with our brothers and sisters in Germany and Ethiopia and Mexico and Canada and Russia and China. We're with St. Nick up at the North Pole and those crazy scientists that live with the penguins at the South Pole and everybody in between. His kingdom knows no boundaries of time either. We hold hearts, if not hands, with, with the likes of Martin and Katie Luther, with St. Augustine, with St. Peter and Paul, with Moses and Noah and Abraham and Adam and Eve. And what's this really mean, right? When we think about it, what's this mean? It means that at the beginning of this last month, at the beginning of November, we celebrated All Saints Sunday where we, we made the list and we rang the bell for every saint that we lost this year. And we say lost, but don't you find that rather funny? We say lost when we know exactly where they are. We have been separated in earthly death from maybe our grandparents, our parents, maybe a spouse, maybe it's your children. But we remain connected us and those we've lost, we remain connected, stuck in the middle with each other between the incarnation and, and the return and fulfillment. And if you want to have fun with this, think about it this way. Not only are we connected with those that we have, have lost and been separated from by earthly death, we're, we're connected in the middle with those we haven't even met yet. For those of you who are praying for a spouse someday, you're connected in the middle with that spouse. For praying for those, for those of you who, who, who are looking forward to children, 
You're connected with those, those brothers and sisters in Christ who haven't even been born yet. We're connected with our, our grandkids and our great-grandkids and our great-great-grandkids and so on and so forth until Christ re does return. See, the kingdom of God has no boundaries. His church has no walls, save two. The incarnation on one side, the resurrection, the, the, the return and, and fulfillment on the other. Till then, I got saints to the left of me. I got sinners to the right. Here I am stuck in the middle with you and there is nowhere else I would rather be and no one else I'd rather be with. So yes, you and I are separated by, Google tells me it's about 1,400 miles as the crow flies, a lot further than that if you have to drive it. We're leading separate lives, separate busy lives. Things are happening in South Dakota. Things are happening down here in South Carolina. And we're apart. We feel disconnected, but, but we're not. Because of that incarnation, because of the bookends of the incarnation and the return, you and I are in the middle, together, living in his kingdom, being his church. And since that's the case, I'd like to take the words from Paul from our epistle text this morning, and I'd like to make them my own. Now may our God and Father himself and our Lord Jesus direct my way back to you. May the Lord make you increase and abound in love for one another and for all as I do for you, so that he may establish your hearts blameless in holiness before our God and Father at the assured and promised coming of our Lord Jesus and all his saints. I'd like to thank Pastor Walt Harper and our brothers and sisters of, in Christ here at Mount Olive Lutheran Church and Preschool for being so warm and generous for the use of their space, this beautiful sanctuary. And I look forward to the time that while we are together in the middle, that we can actually be physically together again, that our, our reunion, I look forward to this reunion at Christmas when we can be back together as one family in one spot. Until then, may the peace of God and the peace which surpasses all understanding guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord and all of us in the middle said, Amen.